How's it going everyone? It's me alone and we're back properly now. I know I uploaded a video earlier this week, but I ended up deleting it because I failed to talk about a fairly important topic, which essentially undermined that video. And even though I addressed it in a pinned comment, every comment was about the thing that I missed. So I am sorry because it now means that I haven't uploaded for a very long time on my channel but I hope that this video kind of makes up for that. So let's talk about mutations in the game. Whenever I've done so, I've always talked about mutations specifically pertaining to my character, but I wanna do a general guide for mutations in 2020. We're gonna be talking about them as a whole, how best you obtain them, some of the perk cards that you can use to help them. And also as well, we're gonna go through every single mutation in the game and we'll talk about which ones are good and which ones are not so good. But I think more often we're gonna be talking about the mutations I think are good for certain builds and the ones that I think aren't so good for other builds. So we're going to try and have a balanced view when it comes to these mutations. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe if you are new. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about mutations in 476 for 2020. Alrighty, we are here at the Motor Science Terminals in the game because this is where you can actually purchase the recipes for the mutation serums. So it's a great way to glance to see all the available uh, mutations in the game. So that's why we're talking about them here. I've got some notes to the right of me as well to make sure I don't miss out on anything, but let's do it. Let's talk about mutations. When it comes to mutations, there are two ways of generally obtaining them in the game. The first and the worst way is simply by exposing your character to radiation, and then you have the chance of obtaining a random mutation in the game. The reason why I say that's the worst way is because it's based on chance, it's randomized. You can't actually pick the mutation that you're obtaining via that method. So you could get a good mutation, but equally you could gain a, a not so good mutation or one that's actually detrimental to your character. So unless you're, you know, you have a fresh build and you don't have many mutations and you're happy to experiment, right? And you know, you just want to opt not having to find the serum for the mutation that you want, then do it, right? But in all other situations, I would say, go with method two. And method two is simply by consuming the serum for the mutation that you want, right? And there are different ways of obtaining them. Of course, if you somehow have the recipes, if you've been playing for a while and you purchase them, you can just craft them. You can purchase them from the terminals here, but they are very expensive from here and you can't always get the one that you want. But I would say the best uh, the best solution, of course, is to simply shop around different player vendors because you can find them nowadays anywhere from 200 to 500 caps. I probably wouldn't spend more than that, but you give it a little bit of time, you serve a hop, you jump around the map, you're going to find the serum for the mutation that you want. And the reason why I want to say that that first method is not so good is because let's say you get a mutation that you don't want. The way of removing them is a bit of a process because what you need to do is get rid of starch genes maxed out if you already have it equipped and then you need to use right away and hope that you lose the mutation that you want to lose but you might actually lose some good mutations in that process because again it's based on chance you can't determine which mutation that you are losing so you risk losing a lot of a lot of maybe all of your good mutations just to get rid of that bad one. Though you can get lucky, chances are you probably won't. So you got to be very careful if you're doing that first method or if you are consuming mutations that you want to experiment with. Just know that later on, you're going to have to go through that process if you want to remove it. And again, as I mentioned, it's very easy to obtain those mutation serums nowadays from player vendors. So generally, uh, mutations have positive and negative effects. There is a good way of dealing with those negative effects on a consistent basis, and that is a perk card. I'll talk about that in a second. But technically, there is another way. Technically, if you had a bunch of flux and a bunch of materials to make serums yourself, then on paper, you could technically use those to suppress the negative effects of your mutations when you want to, because even if you have a certain mutation or the first time that you are using a serum for a mutation, either way, by using that serum, you're actually suppressing the negative effects of that mutation for 60 minutes. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is because let's say you can craft a bunch of serums and in key moments for like combat maybe, you decide to pop one of those serums to completely get rid of your negative effects for the mutations in question for 60 minutes. Some people could do that. Like if you actually want to do that, you could. Like let's say you don't need the flux for ultrasite ammo and let's say you have a bunch of materials to be able to craft that serum very easily that it's a no brainer for you. Go for it if that's you, right? But I would say most people aren't in that situation and I would still generally say 
that it's not the kind of stuff that you should be popping like candy. Like Flux, if it's not beneficial to you, it's probably beneficial for trades to somebody else. So I would generally not advise for you to be doing that. But I'm going to mention it for the sake of completing this in this video. So now let's talk about per cards, right? There are three perk cards that are beneficial or re relevant when it comes to mutations in the game. The main one is Starch Genes. So essentially this means that whenever you use Radaway, you will never lose any of your current mutations. And also as well, when you are exposed to radiation, you will never gain any new mu mutation. So that prevents you from gaining mutations that you don't want. And therefore, you know, and, and also as well, losing mutations that you do want. It effectively locks your mutations in place when it's maxed out and when it's equipped. So I would say most people, you should be using starch genes. You can technically get away with it and not have it equipped, but you just need to be very more careful. You need to be much more careful when using a right away. You need to be much more careful when going to any area that could expose you to radiation. And remember, enemies like ghouls, for instance, when they hit you, expose you to radiation. So it's a much more tricky play there. Most people just have starch, starch genes active at all times. The next one I want to talk about is class freak. So uh, even though it's three points and even though it's not an absolute necessity, I would still say if you really want to have fun with the mutations in the game, you should have Class Freak active. So what this does is reduce the negative effects of your, your mutations by 75%. That's three quarters. is actually a lot. And what it does, it actually makes most uh, mutations in the game fairly viable. There are some exceptions, but generally... I look at mutations with Class Freak in an entirely different light than I would otherwise if I didn't have Class Freak because I would look at their negative effects way more closely because I don't want them, right? But then when I have Class Freak, I could look at those same mutations and think, well, it's not so bad now and I want those positive effects, I'm going to pick it up. So. Class Freak is very good. I would think most people should use it. But most people, if you don't want to use Class Freak, at least have Stranger Numbers, more so if you play on a team. If you play solo, this won't be uh, relevant for you, but I would assume most of you play in a team. So you should be using Stranger Numbers. This, when you're in a team and you at least have one of your teammates mutated, your positive mu mutation effects are 25% stronger. So this is a very nice boost, especially for one point as well. And therefore it's very easy to share. Most people you know, can easily share this um, because it's only one perk point and it's a 25% boost like whether you're getting it by it being shared or whether you're using it yourself you should have stranger numbers active at all times and remember when I'm talking about the base effect of the mutations later on in this video I'm not going to be talking about the improvement that you get with stranger numbers or the reduction in the negative effect that you get with class freak but just know that that exists right it does exist and it is very important again if you want to use mutations very effectively in the game so last couple of things, effectively you can have all mutations in the game at the same time, though I probably wouldn't recommend that um, because it does depend on your build to see which, muta which mutations are worth it and which ones aren't. The exception to that is technically carnivore and herbivore. So I would say that they're effectively the, the different sides of the same coin. If you eat a lot of meat products in the game, you should have carnivore. If you eat a lot of veggie products, products in the game, you should use herbivore. You just can't have them both at the same time. But you can have all other mutations at the same time if you want to. Finally, if you do want to suppress the effects of your mutations, both positive and negative, you can use a Radex, and that of course increases your rad resistance. But if you don't want to do that, you just use a diluted Rad X, and that's a nice way of getting that protection when, you know, while still not losing the effects of your mutations. But if you want to do that for whatever reason, you can, of course, as well. So I'm pointing that out. Also, as well, there are actually materials or consumables in the game that allow you to remove rads without cur curing your, your, your mutations. So this is one of those methods where if you don't want to use starch genes for whatever reason, or maybe you don't have an equipped and you're in a combat fight, if, it, if you're using like a Nuka grape or a Brahmin milk, for instance, you remove rads from your character without curing any of your current mutations, whereas Radaway will cure or potentially will cure. So you definitely should be using those products if you don't want to use starch genes. But let's talk about the mutations in the game. Uh, here and there, I will be talking about uh, special effects as well because or special stats I should say because some of these mutations increase your special stats so you need to know what they do when they improve because it does actually matter for a lot of these mutations but in any event let's start with adrenal reaction so what adrenal reaction does is it increases your weapon damage at low HP so if you are a bloodied build or an unyielding build you should absolutely have adrenal reaction the only downside is that it decreases your max HP by 50 so if you are a full health build 
you're never going to use that weapon damage at low HP, of course, and all it's doing is reducing your max health by 50, so you shouldn't have it if you're a max health build, but if you're a low health build, you should absolutely have it, because remember as well, if it reduces your max health by 50, it's not actually reducing your health when it's below 20% by 50, it's actually 20% of 50, right, or 20% of that maximum amount after you take away 50, so it's not as bad as you think if you are a low health build, so keep that in mind too, but again, if you are a full health build, don't use adrenal reaction it's not going to benefit you whatsoever the next one is bird bone so this is one that's very nicely paired with marsupial because it helps you actually fall from heights more gradually especially when you're jumping high you know you're likely to actually have some fall damage if you don't have those other protections in place so bird bones is nice to have it also just makes jumping to platforms a lot more fun and a lot more easy but also as well what it does is it improves your agility and as it says in the game there by improving your agility it actually boosts your sneaking and increases your H your ap so increasing that is actually a great way to improve your sneak build if you are a sneak build having more ap allows you to do a lot of uh, a lot of other things like you can sprint for a little bit longer you can use vats a little bit more so i would say bird burns is very good the downside is that it reduces your strength by four which i believe it's per point it reduces your carry weight by five pounds so it's 20 pound loss if you're concerned about your carry weight and also as well by reducing your strength it reduces your melee damage so if you are a melee build maybe think twice about using bird bones but if you still want it then you should definitely have class freak to counteract that negative effect so let's talk about carnival again this is the equivalent effectively of herbivore so when you have it i should go to it here essentially it doubles the benefits of meeting eat so that means uh, your hunger satisfaction your hp restoration and even buffs are all doubled when you consume a meat product with carnivore active so that means for instance when you have canned meat stew that improves your radi your experience points for instance by five percent having carnivore actually doubles that so it's an incredible mutation and equally herbivore is just as incredible Incredible when it comes to vegetable vegetable products and the only downside is that when you have carnivore you don't get any benefit from eating vegetables but you're committing in that stage right so it's not really a downside and then we'll get to herbivore in a second so you should absolutely have carnivore if you are eating meat products a lot in the game to me it's an absolute no-brainer for anybody now let's talk about chameleon so chameleon is an interesting one it's a very specific use case i would say and most people that talk about this will compare it with the chameleon um legendary armor effect and, and generally here's why is because when you have the chameleon mutation you are essentially your character is invisible if you're unarmored and standing still however you can still use armor if you use weightless armor and you can see in the prefix or the description of that armor is that it applies it al essentially it allows the chameleon mutation to be active even though you're technically wearing armor but you need to have a full suit of armor for that to work a full suit of uh, uh weightless armor for that to work and then when you you're standing still you become invisible however the moment that you shoot with this mutation you lose it right so while it might be beneficial in like pvp scenarios where people are, are vatsing you and, and when you're invisible you can't really get vats by other players it's not really beneficial in other situations and then it, it when you consider the chameleon uh, armor or the legendary armor some people say that that's better for them because while you have to be crouched, you can actually shoot and not lose your invisibility when it comes to that armor. And you only need one piece. You don't need a full suit of weightless armor to make it viable. You just need one chameleon piece. So generally people tend to lean towards that, but they are slightly different use cases. I'm going to say safely though, that most people probably don't need the chameleon serum, right? There is no real downside. It does say you have to be uh, unarmored and, and um, stationary for it to work. That's not really a downside. It's just the reality of the mutation. But again, most people, you probably don't need this one. Unless you want to adopt that playstyle for whatever reason. So let's talk about Eagle Eyes. So Eagle Eyes is great. It increases the critical damage of your shots by 25% and increases your perception by 4. So by increasing your perception by 4, it increases also your VATS accuracy and your compass range. Compass range, 
it is obviously just a nice to have. It's not really a necessity. Increasing your back's accuracy can help, especially if your perception is naturally a little bit lower. But really, the reason why you want to get this one is because it increases your critical damage by 25%. So if you use that and you do a lot of crits, you should have eagle eyes, especially because of the way damage is now calculated in the game. You need every possible damage source that you can get, especially because of one-way sand and enemies are more tanky. Trust me, eagle eyes is really good being and especially if you're able to deal crits a lot having that plus 25 percent bonus is really nice so make sure that you have eagle eyes if that's you the downside of course is that it reduces your strength by four again without class freak so that means you have uh, less carry weight and less melee damage if you are a melee build you're probably not hitting crits as much as people with weapons i would say but you should have a think about it. If you're a melee build, just have a think about it, especially if you already have um, Class Freak active, because again, you are still getting the benefit of um, having increased back bats accuracy. And I know some people do use that when it comes to melee, but you know, maybe stay away from it if you don't want to have Class Freak. It's probably not the most necessary for you. So let's talk about the next one is Egghead. So Egghead increases your intelligence by six. It's a massive boost. And what people don't realize when it comes to intelligence, yes, it increases, uh, it improves the condition and durability of items that you craft. And yes, it increases your scrapping return. And it also decreases the number of words when you're hacking terminals, so it makes it easier. Though Master Infiltrator kind of makes that redundant now, the legendary perk card. But the main reason why you want Egghead is because having a higher intelligence actually gives you more XP in the game, more experience points. Whenever you do anything, whenever you gain experience points, having a higher intelligence is going to mean you gain more experience points. And with legendary perk cards, with the new season and gaining score attached to that repeatable challenge, like, it's so important nowadays to be gaining as much experience as possible and to be leveling up very, very fast. Again, especially if you are aiming to max out your legendary perk cards and having an extra six intelligence before Stranger Numbers, mind you, so it gets even higher with 25%. Having that boost of intelligence over time is really going to help you have a lot of XP because that's your main goal. Well, at least one of your main goals when it comes to improving your XP is by your increasing your intelligence as much as you can. And if you, especially if you're not a low health build and you don't have have unyielding armor egghead is probably one of the biggest ways for you to do that so the downside is three less strength and three less endurance again melee builds and carry waiters out there keep that in mind but also having three less endurance reduces your hp very slightly it also decreases your disease resistance and decreases your ap drain i should say it incre increases your ap drain from sprinting so it's not as good when you have lower endurance so you do need to keep that in mind i believe each point of endurance is roughly five hp correct me if i'm wrong in that so it does reduce your your health a little bit but if you are concerned about that again just use class freak though i will say because those negative effects are kind of split between two different special attributes yes it is three for each of them i don't think it's that bad i would still have egghead without class freak comfortably just because of the booster xp that it gives you so electrically charged is the next one this one honestly could probably be talked about at the same time as unstable isotope but we'll talk about them separately essentially when you take melee damage it triggers a shock effect so not only does this damage you but it actually damages your enemies the damage to you is kind of ins inconsequential unless maybe if you don't have as much hp and you're a lower level character maybe it damage damages you a little bit more where you should be concerned about it but the main thing is that whenever you get hit it does electrical damage or shock damage to your surround or to the enemy that actually hit you and I believe as well, it triggers the shock effect and it affects multiple enemies around you. Correct me again if I'm wrong, but I don't, I do believe that that's the case. Regardless of how it actually <laughs> works, the damage is very small, all right? It is, it is very small and I would say you probably don't need it. I don't need it. Some would say that it's a, it's a no-brainer because there's no real downside because again, the shock to you doesn't actually hurt you that much. But some people don't actually like the effect that it has. They find that it gets in the way. And again, it's not that great. So if you don't need it, don't bother spending the caps to get the serum for it. It's just not worth it, right? If you already have it and you don't want to lose any of your other mutations, then I wouldn't even say that it's one worth removing. It's just, you know, I just wouldn't recommend it generally. I just say it's probably not worth it, to be honest. So now let's talk about Empath. Empath is actually really good. And shout out Angry Turtle, who did a lot of um, experimenting with this one. So 
it says here, you take increased damage, but your teammates take decreased damage. However, how it actually works is that, yes, your teammates take less damage and you take more damage, but that's actually a, a reduction to team-based damage, which applies to you when you're in that team. So specifically the numbers are, it, you take technically, I believe it's 25% more damage. I can actually check because I have this, per, uh, this mutation. Let's get rid of Class Freak right now. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Am I in a team? Yeah, Empath there. So it increases my damage taken by 25%, but it says minus 25% team damage taken. So when you're in a team, you are actually taking less damage, right? So it incentivizes you to be in a team, of course. But when you couple it, especially, this is why this um, um, mutation becomes incredibly uh, good. When you couple it with Class Freak, for instance, right? Then you only have plus 6% damage taken, and then still minus 25% team, team damage taken. And that improves when it comes to uh, Stranger Numbers 2. I don't have a teammate that's mutated by now, but yes, that actually increases as well. So it's a very, 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 very good mutation to, to, to decrease the amount of damage you and your teammates are taking in the game. And if you are playing in a team and you're benefiting from all those benefits from being in a team, you should have Empath and especially couple it with Class Freak. 100% it is such such a good mutation you really should be using it but of course if you don't play in a team for whatever reason then just don't have empath right because then you're not getting a benefit all you're doing is increasing the damage to yourself next up we have grounded and we're going to go back here um to look at grounded come on terminal open up for me all right let's go to i have grounded so it should be or maybe I don't. Maybe I never bought Grounded. I never bought Grounded. So what Grounded does is it increases your energy resist resistance by 100. But also, it um, means you uh, your damage output from your energy weapons is reduced by 50%. So very generally, if you don't use energy weapons at all, then absolutely you should be using Grounded. The reason why I don't have it and I didn't buy the recipe for it is because yes, the 100 re energy resistance is nice, but I use a Gauss minigun, which technically deals um, energy damage, right? So any weapon out there that deals you know, energy damage, you should not have grounded. It, it is absolutely not worth it because it reduces your damage by a lot, right? But if you don't use those weapons, absolutely take the 100 energy resistance. It is a no-brainer for you. There is no downside for you when it comes to that one. So let's talk about healing factor. So healing factor, I do have. Um, I do have the recipe for, I should say. So what this does is it increases your health regeneration when you're not in combat by 300%. So essentially when you're out of combat, you get all your health back, right? Very, very nice, especially I would say more so if you are a full health build, because when you're gaining that, when you have that much health to gain left, right, it means you're using way less stim packs, way, you know, way less uh, consumables to get all your health back, right? It just does it for you automatically. Of course, it doesn't apply when you're in combat, but it's fine because when you're out of combat, you get all your health back. But it decreases the, the effectiveness of your stim packs and your cams, technically by 55% without class freak. So when you're a full health build and when, you know, when you're getting all that health back, it's great. And you're not needing to heal as much in combat because you're a full health build. But when you're a bloodied build, like myself, having that health regen when you're not in combat is not worth it because you're needing to use stim packs and other cams a lot when you're in combat because you have such little health. So this uh, mutation, <coughs> excuse me, is actually detrimental, really detrimental if you have a low health build. So TLDR, don't use it if you're a low health build, but use it if you are a high health build and you want to easily get your health back when you're out of combat combat, and not use stim packs. And effectively, it is reducing the effect or the effectiveness of your stim packs anyways. So just keep that in mind as well. But if you don't want to have any reduction to your chem effects, just don't use healing factor, right? You can just sleep in a bed to get your health back if you really want to. Then we've got our uh, herbivore that is next. So as I mentioned, herbivore is the equivalent effectively of carnivore. It doubles the benefit of eating vegetables. So that means your uh, hunger satisfaction, HP regen, and also buffs are all doubled with herbivore. 
fundamental. Fundamental, if you grow your own crops, if you use anything that boosts your XP, you're doubling those buffs, it is, or any other stat, I should say, it is doubling those buffs. It is really beneficial. And also, no rads or disease chance. Hundred, no, actually, no rads or disease chance. I don't, I don't think that's true. I think you still do gain... I still think you gain rads when you... Well, I don't have any um, normal... I'm fairly sure you still gain rads when you eat... No, you do. 100% you do. You just don't get diseases, all right? I think that's a, that's incorrectly written. I hope I'm correct. Let me know. I want to check after this video. But yeah, if you eat a lot of vegetables in the game, you should have herbivore, 100%. But the downside is that you can't eat meat. You can't benefit from something like canned meat stew or anything like that. But you are benefiting double now from the veggies, so it is a good trade-off. So now let's talk about herd mentality. God, there is a lot of mutations in the game. So what herd mentality does is it actually uh, when you're it says when your teammates are nearby if you're in a team all your special stats increase by two which gives you a range of benefits across the board more carry weight more health better ap all that stuff that comes with increasing your special stats you get that when you're in a team the downside is that you can't really you can play solo but it's not as effective because all your special stats actually decrease by two so effectively this mutation herd mentality does not have a downside when you are in a team, all right? And you'll notice a, a trend here, especially with the perk card stranger numbers. Mutations become amazing, especially when you're in a team and having those boosts to all your special stats. Again, it helps you with your intelligence to increase your XP. So many benefits, right? So I would say use herd mentality if you're always in a team because it's always gonna give you a boost. Now, marsupial, the one that everyone loves. What the hell is this? Go away, computer. <laughs> marsupial is the one that makes you jump incredibly high. It's fun to use. Let me make sure that you can see it. So your carry capacity and jump height are increased. It's a nice boost to your carry capacity of 20 and your jump height becomes very high. The main reason why people use this is because it's fun, right? And as I mentioned, it pairs very, very well with bird bones. The downside is that it actually decreases your intelligence by four. And this is why I would say, number one, why Egghead is actually fairly important to counteract this negative effect. But also, too, that's why I say Class Freak is really important. Because, again, gaining a lot of, uh, of, of intelligence, of XP, I should say, in the game is very important nowadays. And I still want to use Marsupial. And a lot of people still want to use Marsupial. So that's why I would say, if you don't want to have that hit to your XP and to your intelligence, make sure you have Class Freak active. But yeah, most people, I would say, use Marsupial. It is very, very fun. And you know what? Video games are about fun. It's not always about stats, right? So now let's talk about Plague Walker. Uh, let's go here. Plague Walker is an interesting one. Some people will tell you that this is a no downsides mutation. Because essentially what it does is, is it means that when you have diseases, you have a poison aura which grows stronger with each disease you contract. You cannot recover from the diseases you contract naturally. You can still, I believe, I think you can still use a disease cure to get rid of, rid of them. But you know how you can naturally recover from diseases? When you have Plague Walker, that doesn't happen, right? And the idea is, is you're meant to kind of keep them so that your poison aura gets stronger. From what I can see from what people are saying, I've never used this one myself, but the damage is not that high either. It's kind of like um, electrically charged or unstable isotope. Again, some people would say that there's no downside, but the downside is that you have diseases, right? So I, I, w I wouldn't use Plague Walker, to be honest. Um, I don't think it's it's something that most people that really need, to be honest. I never use it, but you might you might have a differing opinion, so let me know, honestly, in, in the comments below. So let's talk about Scaly Skin. Scaly Skin is up here. Um, most people should use this, absolutely. So what it does is it increases your damage and en energy resistance by 50 each. Not a massive boost, but definitely a nice boost, especially when it comes to energy resistance, which is, is, is a bit harder to increase compared to your damage resistance. The downside is that it decreases your AP by 50. So that means you can't use VATS as much, you can't like, until it recharges, you can't sprint as long, etc, etc. But Class Freak counteracts that. That energy and damage resistance, I would say, is worth it for most people. So definitely Scaly Skin is something that you should be considering. Speed Demon is, uh, with or without Class Freak, Speed Demon is 
something everyone should have. It increases your movement speed and reload speed. So it actually increases your movement speed and reload speed by 20% each, which is awesome. Reloading faster, moving faster, great. No downsides. The downside is that it technically has more of a drain on your hunger and thirst when you're moving, specifically it's 50% of a drain. But it's very easy to make purified water. It's very easy to grow crops or to find meat products, to be honest. So to me, this isn't really a downside. Having faster speed and having faster reload speed is so much more worth it. So everyone, everyone, everyone should be using Speed Demon, in my humble opinion. And then we get to the more spe some of the more specific ones. So Talons, um, where is it here? So if you do unarmed damage, um, you should be using this one because your punching attacks effectively deal 25% more damage and you do bleed damage, but it decreases your agility by four. And of course, decreasing your agility means it decreases your AP and decreases your ability to sneak. So if you are a sneak build, don't use this. If you are anything other than a, a punching or an un unarmed build, don't use this. If you do have that specific build, then Talons is a nice way to increase your damage a little bit more. Just keep in mind the downside to your agility, but again, you have Class Freak to kind of counteract that. Next up is Twisted Muscles. Muscles. This is for melee damage. So this increases your melee damage by 25%, and it gives you a better chance to cripple limbs. The downside is that it decreases your cunt accuracy by 50%. So Twisted Muscles should only be used if you are a melee build even if you have class freak to counteract this it's still only reducing 50 percent by 75 percent that's still a big reduction to your gun accuracy i don't think it's worth it even if occasionally you use your melee i would say that if you're always using your melee weapon then have twisted muscles if you ever like to use weapons uh, or guns in the game then don't have twisted muscles to me it is not worth it and finally, Unstable Isotope. So this is like electrically shocked, essentially. Uh, electrically charged, I should say. So when you take melee damage, a radiation effect may be created, which damages you and your foes. So that radiation blast that essentially activates or can activate when you are struck, it's, again, like electrically charged, it slowly, very minorly damages enemies. And yes, the damage to you is also fairly minor, but it doesn't do that much damage to your enemies. Like, maybe if you are, maybe, a lower health build, you might find some benefit from, you know, dealing with lower level mobs and having electrically charged and un unstable isotope decrease their damage by a little bit more. Maybe in those situations can help, but keep in mind they're still hurting you, right? So, I would say in most situations, unstable isotope probably isn't necessary. So, I think we've covered all the main mutations. Woo, we're done. This video took ages to record. My character's about to die. Let's get to the conclusion of this video. Alrighty way senders, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions. And also as well, let me know if you have some differing opinions when it comes to some of those mutations I wasn't as kind towards because I'd be keen to know for those that do use them more, whether they are really beneficial in certain use case scenarios. But I hope I was as accurate as possible for most builds out there. As you could imagine, that's probably very difficult, right? Well, I think it is anyways. Anyways, way senders, that's all from me. Please take care of yourself and would you kindly keep find the good fight.